Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Peu importe notre âge, on a tous notre rôle à jouer pour contrer le coronavirus. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic 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 covid-19 has hit the world by force but it's unfortunately not going anytime soon and it has killed over 500,000 people in the world in order to combat this virus we need to unite and that is the motivation behind this film. Filmmakers from all around the world have accepted to be a part of this project. And it's just about to get started. So sit back and enjoy. Good afternoon and thank you for taking my question. I would like to know what is the forecast for Mexico at this point in the pandemic. There is an increase in the cases. This week we had more than 6,000 cases a day, and yesterday more than 7,000 in just one day. And we're concerned that many of the deaths are not taking place in hospital. So what is uh, expected? Uh, how do you see this going? Thank you. Perdí un hilo. alcaldías con mayor índice de pobreza son las que tienen la, una tasa más alta de contagios de coronavirus. Por aquí está uno. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think it's difficult to uh, predict the uh, trajectory of, of any epidemic uh, in, 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 in countries uh, at the moment. But certainly uh, Mexico now has, I think, the, the fifth highest uh, COVID-19 death toll and has had uh, 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 record-breaking days in, in the last week, uh, recording nearly 7,000 cases on a, on a single day, with its total cases uh, now surpassing a quarter of a million. أنا بيبلس أنا بيبلس مدينة الحرف مدينة الحرف الواقفة على الحرف الواقفة على خاطركم مع إن من مدينة إلكم بشي أنا مدينة الحرف والحرف عشر تلاف وثمانمائة سنة عمر قطع علي كتير حضارات وعشت من بعضهم فكرتوا فيها شي مرة ما تموتوا وتنطروا حضارة ورا حضارة شفت وعشت صورات حروب حتى يمكن شفت السلام بس ما عرفته لا اتمسك فيه ما عرفته لا اتمسك فيه مثل محجاري صار له سنين ممسك ببعضه ما عم حس غير بنفس البحر جواتي الناس كلها بعدت عني سكروا بوابهم انحجروا خايفه يتحجروا خايفه يتحجروا ويصيروا مثلي خايفه يتهجروا خايفه اول ما اعلنوا او قالوا انه رح يصير في لوك داون بمنطقتنا هالشي كتير خوفنا بالبداية وخوف كل الشعب اللبناني لانه نحن بطبيعتنا منحب نظهر منحب نسهر منحب الحياة منحب ننبسط منحب نمزح فهالشي اثر على الكل العالم اول شي they didn't take it seriously ما اخذتها بجدية ابدا كانت تشيل الماسكس وتكبهم على الطريق تشيل الكفوف كمان تكبهم على الطريق وهالشي اذا البيئة اكيد وين ما روح شوف زبالة اخد معي كيس ونظف من ورا الناس اللي عم يكبوا الزبالة تبعهم الدولة اللبنانية طلبت من كل الشعب اللبناني انه يلتزم بيته هالفترة أنا ما ظهرت من بيتي أبدا كنت عم على الصبح أكيد على مهلة لأنه بطلت مستعجلة لروح على شغلي وعلى مهلة أشرب قهوتي على مهلة أعمل شوية رياضة أطلع على التلفزيون وأتسلى كنا عم نحكي مع أخواتي وخياتي فيديو كولز أكثر شيء كل الناس حجرت ببيتها وأكثر شريحة تضايقت نفسيا واقتصاديا هي فئة الشباب. اللي زعجنا أكثر شيء هو إنه الناس اللي حكيتهم طمنت عنهم بهالفترة إذا عايزين شيء 
بس ما كانوا عم يحكوني ولا عم يتطمنوا عني فهالشي خلاني صير انتي سوشيال ما حب الناس وانغلق على حالي اكثر تاثرنا كثير لانه الدولار بلش كل يوم يعلى القدره الشرائيه عند المواطنين بلشت تخف لانه الناس عم تقبض باللبناني بينما المصروف حسب سعر الدولار مشان هيك كان شغله كثير صعبه انه نكفي هيدا الموضوع اثر كثير على الشعب اللبناني وعلى الشباب وما بقى عندهم الا حل يلي هو الهجره الهجره الى بلد يرضي لهم طموحاتهم بلد يامن لهم يلي بلدنا ما قدر يامن لهم في اشياء ساعدتني انه ضل مبسوط حتى لو كانت حتى لو كان الزعل اكثر بهالفتره هو انه انا كثير بحب الحيوانات وبحب الطبيعه فهودي كانوا مثل اسكيب من العالم اللي حوالي واسكيب من الرياليتي اللي انا فيه علموني هاو تو بي سمبل اخذ كل شيء بسلاسه وما عقده انا صرت انسان ثاني وهيدا اللي عم نمرق فيه هي مجرد ازمه قد ايه بتطول قد ايه بتقصر انا ما بعرف بس بعرف انه دائما في امل بفجر جديد ومش لازم ننسى انه نحن اولاد الفينيقيين وطائر الفينيق انبعث من بين الرماد وعاد حيا يحلق في السماء It was like never before. It felt like an apocalypse. started to realize that he's serious and being selfish is not going to help anyone. The streets were quiet, were still, were vacant. It was really different, something that we've never experienced. But everyone understood it was what that needed to be done. During this first phase, I do think we definitely did see an enormous decrease of social activity. Public transport, although still did have to run because it was the only way for some essential key workers to travel to and back from work, it was like never before. At this point, things did get noticeably out of control. You would notice someone wearing a mask rather than someone not wearing a mask as there were that less of people practicing social distancing. It was a very sudden transformation from constantly wearing a mask, constantly using hand sanitizer. Some benches all over the UK gave you free hand sanitizer to use and then Suddenly people just stopped wearing masks. I don't know if they were bored, but people acted like it was finished, finished.
Hi, my name's Winnie and I live in Wales, which is a small country next to England. The rules for Wales have been slightly different to our neighbouring country, which usually decides the laws for this place, but Wales has made their own on this occasion. Things have been stricter here. We weren't allowed to travel five miles away from our house and we weren't allowed to see people from different households. Some of those have come back, but most of them are still in place. All those shops have been able to open and non-essential shops as well. In Wales, the number of people who had corona and were ill and have died is around 15,000, which is incredibly low. And I think this is down to the fact that we're such a rural country. Most of the people affected live near the capital of the country, which is the city of Cardiff. Um, my sister lives up that way, so I haven't been able to see her for months. We decided to stay in from around the 16th of March and then the week after the country started shutting down and people started to stay at home. So it was about 70 or 80 days while things just like nothing happened. It was really creepy, like the roads were empty, the streets were empty, town was like empty and we didn't see anyone we knew for ages. It was really sad. So during this time I spent a lot of time at my allotment and in my garden. During this time I've been completing my degree in film. The plans changed for what I was going to hand in for it, but I have now kind of graduated. I don't get a ceremony or a certificate until things are safe, but I have graduated, so that's something that's come out of all this. I feel thankful for living in such a quiet and rural place. I've known two people that have caught the bug and they're both fine, so I'm very thankful for that. كنت أدرس صفا أول لما أمر ذهبي بطلت اسمي موجة أمر 12 أني أتحمم بالشارع واستحي لأنه ما بيش معانا حمام وهذا الماء نشرب مني معي أستاب طالب مني يعني مطبخ نطبخ العيال أنا آكل اسمي زغيرة ما أعرفش كم ما أعرفش أكتب اسمي إنني ما درست أكثر بعد ما تزوجت ما درست أنا نقص في البيت أساعد أمي في الطبخ بكر الصبح نفس القصة
Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Малахов Александр, мне 21 год, и я актер театра и кино. Я бы хотел вам рассказать немного про то, как проходила моя самоизоляция. Признаюсь честно, у меня было все гораздо благополучнее, чем у большинства людей. Поначалу, как только все началось, меня сразу же забрали за город. Я понимал, что у меня дофигища времени и просто кайф. Тратить его можно как угодно. Расписывай себе утром кинотеатр, ты смотришь фильмы просто сколько хочешь, потом читаешь, потом занимаешься, записываешь самопробы, разбираешь отрывки. Кайф просто, ты полностью принадлежишь себе. Это был первый мой этап. Второй этап был таков, что начинается какое-то уже такое... Ощущение, что тебе не хватает общения, что ты 24 на 7 в одной и той же комнате, в одном и том же доме, ты хочешь с кем-то общаться. И началось какое-то самокопание. Я начал как-то пытаться думать о том, что какие предназначения у меня, чего я хочу добиться, как-то уже так более глобально. Начал заниматься йогой, при том, что раньше как бы не пробовал, но вот вот так. А, третий этап. Наконец-то все начало потихоньку образумиваться и... Мы отпраздновали выпускной, потому что я выпускной курс в этом году. И мы начали встречаться с людьми, наконец-то мы вышли на улицу, начались потихоньку очные пробы, началась, в принципе, более-менее какая-то жизнь. Тебе долго не разрешали, и вот ты вырвался на улицу, ты встретился с лучшими друзьями. Пробы начались очные, и как бы ты с партнером работаешь вот так, а не по скайпу и не по ватсапу. Поэтому, дай бог, все будет хорошо, дальше будет все лучше и лучше, и будьте здоровы. Hello. My name is Diogo, and I'm from Portugal. COVID-19 started hitting us around the beginning of March. Um, school started closing from one day to the other. My life drastically changed. I stopped seeing my friends. I stopped getting out of the house. I really respected uh, what was going on and what should be the responsibility of each other. So I chose to stay in quarantine for two months and a half. In my house, I would only go for shopping groceries. I would be very careful with who I was with. Um, and I took all that time to learning new things that I didn't have time to learn before, uh, study harder for my exams. And it was beneficial in a way, but also destructive in a more psychological way. However, what happened is that Most of the Portuguese citizens did respect the safety measures for the first couple of months. It reflected in the results. We were probably one of the best countries in the beginning fighting COVID-19. However, recently it has all been completely different. We've lifted some measures. Um, we almost have our normal life now, however, we are on the blacklist of most European countries because after lifting the measures we are not dealing very well with what happens after. And I think the country is in this situation because most people are tired of this whole virus thing. I've seen people even saying it's fake, let's end this uh, conspiracy theory. And I've seen many, many people just ignore the safety measures completely and just live their normal life, uh, organize illegal parties and just do everything that puts everyone in danger. It is disrespectful for a lot of people, especially the ones that have lost loved ones because of this virus. And I just hope that everything Uh, gets back to a better pace and that we can go back to our normal lives as soon as possible but the fact is we gotta help each other and we gotta respect each other we cannot just think oh we are tired of it and let's just go live our normal life again because we can't we have to respect who is vulnerable to this and until we have a cure we should Be respectful. Amazina and Yavanitaman did see the Motari, Maravajans of Mohanda, Mosans, Bay, Nakoraga, of a Sakminim, Kurasa, Tatuza Muditondo, Amafranga Tia, Wana to Koravajans of Mohanda, Mafranga Tia, Wana, Kujok, Mosu, Yura Tokra, and Yu Bijana, to Gakura Pia, Mafranga to Kafi, to Kabatia Fite, to Kiyu Waka, even just to Kuwaka, Mimachet Quarry Tejimbe.
hanyuma mu kwa gatatu cyezo cya covid kimaze kuza cyaje nkaho kigiye kutubera imbogamizi yo kugira ngo dukomeze twiyubake leta ishiraho ingamba za goma mu rugo tuguma mu rugo ibintu byose barabifunga natwe turimo ku buryo akazi kose kahise gahagara hanyuma twese tuguma mu rugo leta cyokoze igerageza kudufasha kwa ko nuni tutakoraga idufashisha mu bikoresho by'ibyo kurya mu bikoresho by'amasuku ndetse n'ibikoresho byo gusukura imibiri yacu cyangwa se ahandi hantu kuba tishoboye nabo leta yagiye bafasha ibagoboka ibaha ibyo kurya abafite uko bifite naho bagenda baha abatifite muri make twese tugenda dufashanya mu kugeza igihe leta itangire gushyiraho ingamba zo koroshya ibikorwa bimwe na bimwe turashima leta y'u Rwanda yadufashije yafashije abantu bapima ba bari bari gupimwa bajyana mu kato bajya gufungirwa ku buryo bayivuzaga byibura nta giciro leta ibaciye bakabaho mu gihe cy'imisi 14 nta giciro bishyura gusa turashimira leta yadufashije haba mu byo kurya habo ko yadufashije ndetse n'ibindi bikorwa byose byakorwaga areta bidufashije turayishimira cyane cyane ndetse no mukuru w'igihugu wacu abigizemo uruhare Okay, we're standing at the corner of the closest main road intersection to the Bedouin village of Al Arakib. Al Arakib uh, has been destroyed 108 times since 2010. That's almost every month the uh, Israeli police or IDF come and destroy this Bedouin village. They have title to this village going back to 1905. Nonetheless, the government keeps coming in and destroying the village. It's the visitor room. Here, the kitchen. Here the toilet, and there, you see, when we make a shower, it's the down. And you see different trouble here. And all of uh, this trouble was a house in 2010, before 2010. And in 2010, my house and my neighbor house and my son house and my cousin house became to be trouble. First of all, welcome for you, Alan Wasahlan, with a happy face, with welcome, with Alan Wasahlan. But I feeling so sad. Why? Because I am did not looking like original Bedouin. Because nothing safe here. Before. 2010, before the second big demolition, I had a beautiful Bedouin house, a nice Bedouin house with the original things. This is what Israel government tried to kill my culture. You know, in my culture, any visitor came here, we will make new coffee for the visitor 
this meal it's the best that I take my visitor welcome and I show them I make it really when they came they see with the eyes here the coffee original coffee you see All of the time I thinking about what will happen, about our situation, about our land, what the government planning against us, the Arabs, the Bedouin, the Palestinians inside Israel. They've been reduced to what we would consider to be nothing, and yet they fed us what several of us thought was the best meal we've had. And with all that's been taken from him, he's still giving, he's still hospitable, he's still loyal to his culture, which says to welcome the stranger. The Arab expression is sumud, uh, which stands for steadfastness. And here, the organ document, since 1905, since 19. 99, since 1929, since 1936, since 1973, during Israel established. Mm. They recognize my land here. But they try all of the time to, to make my life hard in Arakib and to move. They think if they make my life hard, I will move. Never. Mm -hmm. Never. I will stay here. Mm -hmm. I will stay here. Ah, vraiment, c'est compliqué. C'est compliqué en ce temps de, de la pandémie. C'est une pandémie dont de, personne n'attendait. C'est venu. Effectivement, c'est venu et quelques jours après, on nous dit qu'on ne doit pas sortir, on doit se, on doit se, se protéger, et tout ça là, de, de gauche à droite. Et là, on a mis, on a mis en quarantaine des gens, on a, après c'est le, le confinement et total, on nous a donné des, 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 des temps à respecter la distanciation, tout ça là, c'est comme on est, on est arrivé dans un autre monde. Et effectivement, c'était dans un autre monde. Nous sommes dans les pays où euh, la culture et l'art ne sont pas une priorité. Ça a été très, très, très difficile pour nous. Ça a été très, très compliqué. Euh, surtout, euh, particulièrement nous, les entreprises culturelles et de, et de, culturelles et de l'art. Et il y avait des sorties, j'avais des programmations, des festivals, des rencontres artistiques ici et ailleurs, des expositions prévues et tout ça était aux arrêts total. Il y, a, il, y avait, il y a des sorties de fond, mais il n'y avait pas d'entrée. Arrivé à un niveau, on a, on a, on a, tout, euh, on a tout exploité. C'est quatre ou trois mois déjà passés et ce fut compliqué. Que les activités d'abord sont en arrêt et que euh, nous les artistes, euh, on a un peu de peine à s'en sortir. Il faut courir de, de gauche à droite, peut-être faire des, des activités qu'on n'a pas l'intention de vraiment faire en ce temps de crise. Donc euh, j'avoue que tout ce qui nous vient un peu à la main, qui peut être euh, une source de revenus pour la famille, euh, gérer la famille, on s'engage dedans. Le 25 février, le ministre algérien de la Santé a annoncé au journal télévisé le premier cas du Covid-19. Début de mois de mars, d'autres cas ont été déclarés par le ministre de la Santé. Le confinement a été déclaré officiellement le 12 mars par le pouvoir public pour une période de trois semaines. Le premier foyer a été déclaré à la Wilaya de Blida. 
et c'est au niveau de cette dernière où le nombre le plus important de gens qui ont été affectés par le Covid, qui explique le confinement total de cette wilaya. Au début, le confinement n'a pas été respecté par tout le monde. Mais après, les gens commencent à prendre conscience en voyant le taux des cas s'élever du jour en jour. L'Algérie a déclaré plus de 33 000 cas, dont 22 800 guérisons et 1261 décès. Yeah, my name is Kaya Bilani. I'm from South Africa, in Worcester. Mm -hmm. I'm based in the Western Cape. I'm a contractor, I'm a businessman. Yeah, this issue of coronavirus, my man, is killing us. Hello everyone, my name is Akona Musala. Mm -hmm. I'm from South Africa, yeah. the Western Cape in Worcester, at Zoletem location. I do magic. My stage name is Moshka Magic. I'm a young, exciting magician and a kids entertainer. You know, um, past three months has been hectic, you know. Yeah. A lot of things have just come to a halt abruptly, you know. Um, it was not something that you, we plan. It was not something that we foresee. I've got a lot of challenge. I've, I've do magic and I entertain kids. So if I entertain kids, I must go to school to, to entertain from shows or weddings, outdoor events. I only do those magic, stage magic. Some of us are doing our close-up magic. They can get money from this coronavirus. Mm. But as I, Akona Musal, I can't get money because I do stage magic. I don't do street magic or close-up magic. Uh, you know, um, for instance, I'm in construction. You know, there were a lot of projects that were piling up, that were coming, you know, since our government is doing a lot of uplifting for, for small contractors, black contractors mm -hmm. in South Africa. So when this thing of, of Corona started, yes. you know, um, everything came to a standstill. Mm. I've learned a lot of things mm. about this Corona. Some of us, they don't take this Corona seriously. They take it as a joke. Even the government says there's a number, maybe the number of, of, of Cape Town, 100, maybe 110,000 of people are dying there, but we don't know them. Mm. Some of us believe that this is a corona and they lost their families and friends. Hmm. Hi, my name is David Boyer. I'm from Mishawaka, Indiana, uh, from US of A. And I'm gonna talk about how COVID has affected my life. For one thing, my job, which I work in retail at a retail store, I, I was furloughed for at least a couple months. Привет! Меня зовут Чернова Ольга, и меня спросили, Оля, а что случилось с тобой за время карантина? И я подумала и решила признаться всем, что, во-первых, я переехала. Good morning. This is Nisha from Bangladesh. 
today i'm going to share you to my daily life in this quarantine at first i am going to tell you about my family in my family there are three members me my husband and one loving daughter my daughter is reading in class 4 and she is sleeping now and my husband is in another room because he is working in a clinic and he is maintaining distance from us hello my name is lucy and i'm from hamburg germany when covid hit our country i was at first very yeah how can i say i was shocked i was really shocked i was shocked and i was making up my mind what can i do what can i contribute to help my countrymen what can i do to ease the pain for people who can't go out what can i do for helping my neighbors for example and so i had to go on uh unemployment for a couple for i have, i'm still on unemployment cuz i'm not sure now that the store has reopened i have to wear a mask i have to do and clean like ocd levels of clean the suffering of the middle class people in our country are much more than others because the working class people are getting help from the government and from the rich people but the middle class family cannot uh, go for a uh, help and cannot express their actual um, financial crisis uh, that's why they are suffering a lot there are many groups many initiatives called corona help for example who helped all the people in the german speaking countries like switzerland austria and germany um yeah i subscribed to them and uh, they had different different kind of uh, options you could for example help somebody with shopping under these circumstances me along with my family members some of my relatives and some of my friends we have decided to help the poor people uh, those who have no money and no food the the problem that i had was uh not being labeled essential i wasn't able to become a good like the best person i could be because i was written off Всё-таки как режиссёр, как фильммейкер я научилась выходить из зоны комфорта. Чего я вам желаю? Теперь я живу в лесу. Вот, это значит мой диван. А мои стены, мой потолок. На самом деле я правда переехала, но я переехала в другой город. Я переехала в Московскую область. Я устроилась на новую работу, и я очень надеюсь, что это будет то место, где я буду счастлива. А я очень долго хотела попасть в это место, но у меня не получилось. А благодаря карантину это случилось само собой. On the back of six traumatic months of democratic protests and political turmoil, the arrival of the coronavirus poses as an additional wrench in Hong Kong society that has already suffered immensely. With such uncertainty and upheaval, one may wonder how Hong Kong still manages to survive. basically a full year of constant unpredictability. When we look back at the first SARS virus that appeared in 2002, places like Hong Kong and Taiwan had to endure the hardships and learn their lessons with regards to contact tracing, um the importance of wearing masks in public, uh, not only to protect oneself but, you know, to protect others. Um and that reacting quickly is of absolute paramount importance. Um so as a result the first and second waves of covid in Hong Kong were quickly contained with only four deaths whilst other countries suffered thousands when the virus first became prominent in March Hong Kong restricted entry to residents only to reinforce the notion of essential travel they also prohibited more than four people meeting each other in public setting or to prevent large gatherings making it easier for contact tracing alongside that they made wearing masks mandatory and on public transportation where offenders can still get a fine of up to 5000 Hong Kong dollars if caught in mid June after months of observation the government decided to ease the rules theme parks such as Ocean Park and Disneyland are uh, reopened up to a quarter capacity public parks basketball courts and football pitches etc reopened with many services such as gyms bars restaurants returning to full capacity recently however 
A small influx of new cases from an unknown source has caused the bubble to pop, and a record 61 new cases in a day has been recorded. This has been considered by many as the start of the new third wave. Mornings are bright, the air is fresh, football fields are as green as you can get. But whilst most of the country actually controlled the epidemic pretty well, Quebec and mostly the region of Montreal were hit hard. Even to this day, I'm still concerned about the situation. Let me show you why. For the major part of the past few months, we've been in a complete lockdown. It's only in the last weeks or so that some school reopened. Restaurants and bars have started to receive clients and family and friends have started gathering in parks. Although I truly appreciate being able to play football early in the morning, I can bear the thought of the consequence of the premature reopening. Quebec is not distinct enough and nobody knows what is really going on. Experts can't evaluate the situation because we don't even know where the virus is anymore. The situation is alarming and people here are starting to disregard the threat that is COVID-19. In the past couple of months, over 5,000 Quebecers, most of them elderly people, died to this virus. During this time, I couldn't help myself but think about how we have mistreated our most vulnerable in society. We left them alone to die against a virus that shows no mercy. What Canada needs is investment, strong and efficient investment into the health system. We should have done better, we could have done better, we had to do better, and hopefully, we will do better. We stand united. Through the pain. Through the good times. Through the worst. But ultimately for each other. 2020 has been rough. We have seen it all. This movie is a statement that we can still fight alone. Several countries coming together. Working together. United as one. Let's be kind. Let's help the ones in need. Let's never forget the hard times. But let's also focus on our future. This is the message we want to send. As this film comes to an end. We want to thank you all for watching and helping us make this message transcend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to do a foot. I want to do a Oh, Amir, you're dead. Yes, sir.